Hey guys, you're watching AF Swift Tutorials, Andrew speaking, and today I'd like to explain you solid principles for Swift developers on practical examples. So what's solid? Solid is basically stands for five different conventions of coding. Following those principles makes your code more robust, more maintainable, and easier to manage and understand. So let's start with the first principle, SRP or single responsibility principles. A class should have one and only one reason to change. According to this principle, each module should have only one responsibility and reason to change. This means that every class or similar structure in your code should have only one job to do. This principle helps you to keep your classes as clean as possible. So let's take a look on a practical example and what's not recommended and what breaks SRP. We have a structure general handler. We have a handle method that requests data from API, uh, writes uh, the data to constant, then parses constant and saves array to database. And everything is uh, and everything is handled inside of one handler. Why it breaks SRP? Because if you want to change either API or parsing or saving uh, functionality, you need to change and modify this handler every time. What is recommended due to SRP approach? We should break our handler into three different distinct handlers. One for API handling, second for parsing and the third one for DB handling to save data to DB. Then we have handler that uses dependency injection in order to inject all those three handlers. Uh, just in sake for this video, I'm using the structures itself, but you should not rely on those structures, but on upon abstraction. So you should use API handler protocols, parse uh, handler protocol, and so on. In this case, you have really decoupled code. And in this case, you can easily change the implementation as long as it conforms to the a API handler protocol, for example. Second one, open closed principle. Software entities should be open for extension, but closed for modification. If you want to create a class that is easy to maintain, it must have two important characteristics. Open for extension, you should be able to extend or change the behavior of a class without efforts, closed for modification. You must extend a class without changing the existing implementation. So again, example, I have structure cat and class giraffe. For example, I'd like to print the details of those two objects. With a bad approach, which breaks uh, open close principle, we have bad logger. In order to print data, we have uh, separate arrays for cats, then we print uh, cats array, and then we have giraffes and print giraffes array. What if we have third animal? And we also wanted to print the data of it. We need to add the third uh, array and the third uh, and loop through this array and print it again. So what is better approach? It's logger that uses print data protocol. So we're not uh, relying on cat array or giraffe array, but we're relying on printable protocol. So printable protocol has a method print details and every structure that conforms to printable should have print details method and that returns a string. Therefore, in this case, we could paste uh, wherever we want inside of this array as long as it conforms to printable. With a bad logger, if we want to add new animals and print them, we need to modify the existing structure every time, but with a logger, and printable protocol, we can easily add new object to animals array as long as they conform to printable. And we don't need to modify, but we could extend the functionality of logger. 
The next one, this one probably the hardest to explain. This is not too hard by itself, but it's hard to understand what's going on. It's LSP, Liskov Substitution Principle. Functions that use pointers of references to base classes must be able to use objects of derived classes without knowing it. This principle can help you to use inheritance without messing it up. Adding precondition to the subclasses breaks uh, LSP, which means that when we overwrite the parent class, we should not change the implementation of the parent uh, class. Because in this case, we cannot substitute the object of derivative class by the object of parent class. So I've created a protocol polygon. For OOP approach, it should be class with a property area. In protocol oriented approach, we, in Swift, we could use protocols. So we have a protocol that has area property and we have two classes, rectangle and square. Both have different uh, implementation of area property. But inside of the function print area, we are using polygon. And no matter what object we're gonna paste, is, is it gonna be a rectangle or square, it will calculate the area properly because it will fetch the right implementation. This means that we don't need to rely on derivative class, for instance, print area for rectangle or print area for square and specify which class it should be, but we could just rely on polygon protocol. The next one is ISP or interface segregation principle. Many client-specific interfaces are better than one general purpose interface. It's saying that clients should not be forced to depend upon interfaces that they do not use. So here we have a simple example of a moving protocol, which is not recommended to do. And inside of this protocol, we have different methods like walk, fly, swim, and jump. And for instance, we wanted to create a structure bird that could walk and could fly, but cannot swim and cannot jump. And a human that could walk, but cannot fly. Therefore, we do not really need to use all of the methods for moving, but only the, the necessary method for each structure. For human, we only need walk method. For bird, we need both walk and fly, but no, don't need swim. So this one is pretty simple. We just do not need to use, uh, to force the object to use the necessary implementations of the protocol that those objects simply do not really need. And the last one, dependency inversion principle or DIP. High level modules should not depend upon low level modules. Both should depend upon abstractions. Abstractions should not depend upon details. Details should depend upon abstractions. We use protocols to create abstractions and make dependency upon abstractions rather than pasting concrete classes, what leads to tight coupling and lack of reusage. When I was talking SRP, single responsibility principle, I was already mentioning the abstraction. So this principle is actually talking about that. We should not depend upon concrete objects, but abstractions, because we could easily change the implementation uh, for, the, uh, for, this, for some protocol. And our class that depends upon abstraction, but not the concrete object, it should not know that we change the implementation. So here, here we have class bad persistence that breaks the IP principle. It has file manager and inside of write function, it directly uses file manager to save some strings. So why it's bad? Because inside of the high level object, which is bad persistence, we are using low level object file system manager. And it depends not upon an abstraction, but actually 
has the implementation of file system manager. So what if we want to change it to database manager and save data into database? So in this case, we are breaking DIP, but also we're breaking open close principles because we need, we cannot extend the object, but we need to modify it in order to change uh, it uh, to use database manager. So what is the better approach without breaking DIP? We need to have class persistence and inside we have a property storage which relies upon storage protocol, not the concrete type. And again, we are using a dependency injection in order to set what storage type we wanted to use. Either it's going to be file system manager or database manager, but our persistence class doesn't even know about implementation. And inside of the write method, it's going to call the save method from a protocol without knowing the real implementation. The real implementation we're going to use when we create a persistence object and assign it a file manager or database manager. Only then it will actually use the real implementation. But our persistence is agnostic regarding which manager it actually uses. So this is it in a nutshell, solid principles for Swift developer. If you find this video interesting or useful, give it a like, consider subscribing to the channel. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you in the next episode. Goodbye.